Hello, this is R-I-C-K-Y, the Android guy. Hey guys, today we're going to do the full side-by-side -side comparison for the camera on the iPhone 5S and the Note 3. Now these two are definitely sporting some of the top cameras out on the market, so it's time to find out which one is better. If you do want to see the full comparison, I do have a video for that uh, going over all the features of the device, but however, this time we're just going over the camera. So let's go into it and see which one is the better one just by the camera standards. Now when it comes to the interface, these two are very different. Um, and overall, I do like the interface for this device better, but let's go through and see why. So for the iPhone 5S, it's a very simplistic one. However, it has changed dramatically since the uh, previous iPhones and it's gone in a, just really a much better direction. So first of all, we finally have live filters built into the iPhone, which is really nice just because we've seen this on so many other devices and they got it right by doing live previews as well, which Samsung was one of the only ones that did live previews beforehand. So it's nice to see that they're doing that as well. Uh, for the photo section, we have the photo right there. We have the square photo, which is uh, a, a one by one ratio, which is perfect for Instagram. And we have, of course, the panorama photo. Besides that, on the top we have flash, HDR mode on and off, and the front face camera. Then we have regular video quality, 1080p at 30 frames per second. And then we have slow motion video, 720p video at 120 frames per second. So that is the interface for the iPhone 5S. Now what about for the Note 3? Obviously we're going to have a bit more in-depth uh, features with the Note 3. First of all, I do like that this is here. So you do not have to toggle between photo and video anymore. Both are available right away. So with this one you have to swipe between them. You no longer have to do that, taking that extra second where you could be taking a photo or a video. Uh, you also, of course, do have the live filters built in right down here at the bottom with, of course, uh, view, live view right away. And then you can tap to your heart's desire. Nice thing about that is you can always add more. So there's been lots uh, to add thus far. I think I've added about six uh, different filters. And of course, you have the mode section right here. Now the mode section has a lot of uh, useful features, uh, different scenarios. Best face basically airbrushes your face, gets rid of wrinkles, acne, blemishes, all that kind of stuff. Uh, best faces uh, would be really going for group shots, takes five consecutive photos, and lets each person pick out their best face. Drama shot, anime photo, there's just a lot. Oh, an important note, of course, the panorama right there. So you have a lot of different kind of photos. You also, of course, have the dual shot, which Samsung's known for, so you can be in the photo too. Hey guys! You also have that, as well as switching from your front camera right here. Now, the one thing I wish that Samsung would do is uh, kind of create a video modes right here, but to get to the video modes you have to go up here to the top, which I feel isn't as user friendly as their big mode button for photos. However, in the recording mode for the videos, you have limited text message, slow motion, which is the same, uh, 720 at 120 hertz, or there at uh, 120 hertz, at uh, 120 frames per second, fast motion, uh, which is only available on this one thus far, uh, slow motion is good for dramatic effect, fast motion is good for comical effect, and the new slow motion, which is, or sorry, smooth motion, which is 60 frames per second at 1080p, which is by far the best video quality you have ever seen. I do have a video separate on that to show you how what that looks like, and it's by far my favorite feature on the Note 3. Now, one of the other nice features that people often don't remember is that the Note allows you to take photos using your voice, which I really often use, uh, um, very often actually, so it's really good for that purpose. Also, um, you have the Smart stability. This is a much better version of HDR essentially. It's just a great low light mode that gives the Note 3 and the S4 before it uh, the best low light quality you can find out there. 
Now, when it comes to the actual photos taken, let's see which one does a better job. Okay, now we have taken several photos with each device, so now we're going to see and critique each one and see which one really is better. This first photo you see has a flash in low light, so these are both low light photos taken with flash. And what we can see overall with this is we can see overall that the 5S is just given a much better color and uh, I would even say detail on this one. This one just was not a clear shot for the Note 3 and it was blurry. So for that reason, uh, this one will go to the 5S. Now when it comes to low light without a flash, this is what we get. Um, as we saw in the S4 beforehand, Overall, just being able to let more light through in the darker areas will go to the, oops, will go to the Note 3. It's just able to let more light in uh, to give better clarity and also just better depth in low light photos without a flash. So with a flash, it seemed that um, when taking pictures of objects, the iPhone 5S would do much better. However, without a flash, the Note 3 is considerably better. So, depending on what you're using it for, these will determine which one you want. Now, when we're outside and taking photos, we can kind of see a difference in uh, these two images. So, overall, the impression was that the Note 3 just gave the better uh, clarity and also toned down the neon a little bit better and a little bit sharper as we can see in just each of these you can kind of see the Quiznos is pretty much faded out here which you can still see it more or less right here pretty good um, as well as descending now in terms of this light uh, neither did fairly well but I would say this neon uh, did a bit better on the 5s Overall though, even if you just look at uh, the bricks to anything in the area, um, it's just going to be the Note 3 just giving a bit better uh, clarity and just texture, whereas this is flat. Now with the HDR mode put into place, it was a little bit of a difference. Uh, for one, this did show a bit better. However, uh, with the lighting situation that I had, however, overall clarity, you can just see a little bit more still in the Note 3. So um, the only way, the only thing that the iPhone did be, do better with this is the Del Taco. You still can't make it out entirely, but you can make it out better on here. Now, when it comes to street, we have two for the 5S we have uh, the no, or just regular photo and then the HDR one. As you can see just from this photo alone, you can immediately see just more depth on the Note 3. It just uh, really has a sense of grandeur uh, with it. None is really that great as we see across the street with uh, this kind of low light, and I'll even put the iPhone on the HDR. With HDR, the iPhone 5 does do a bit better, especially with the lights. However, with the building itself, um, it's just a bit uh, better on here than here, but it's really kind of a wash. None of, the, none of them are to write home about um, for those kind of photos. Now, when it comes to macro in oversaturated light, we take a look at these two. First macro, again, under oversaturated light, so this is in the studio where the lights are very bright. So we we're trying to see how each one would do. And of course, the one thing I always have to kind of try to do is zoom in as much with both. So to see where these two are kind of coming from, uh, the clock is a lot uh, clearer, and so is the 280 on the map for the Note 3, just the finer details. So with oversaturated light, it seems that the Note 3 
will do the better job in terms of just the clarity. So when we, when we go through that, we definitely see just the better off detail for that purpose. Now, when it comes to macro during the day and outside, we do see that the iPhone 5S just is a little bit better with macro. And as I said before, one of the main reasons for this is the Note 3 seems to highlight everything, which is not what a photographer necessarily wants to do. They necessarily want to just get the flowers in the photo and that's it. But uh, the background is really clear on here, uh, much clearer than the 5S. Of course, the 5S attention was on the flowers, which is what I wanted. So um, maybe I could have got closer with the macro here, but overall I will give the macro um, outside to the 5S, whereas the macro inside seems to be better with the S, or sorry, with the Note 3. Now the same flowers we took a look at earlier, which the 5S did better with flash and which the Note 3 did better without flash. We see right here. And overall, we find something interesting, basically uh, what we found before. iPhone 5S seems to do uh, better with color reproductions. These are much more purple flowers than they are right here, or pink, as whereas the detail, say in this area, is a bit better with the Note 3. So detail is better with the Note 3, as where the 5S is doing better with color reproduction. Now, these two were taken at the same time of day, literally seconds apart, but obviously you can tell a huge difference in um, these sensors and how much light is being let through. So uh, really, you know, just whether it be the Del Taco sign or any of this, or any of the signs here now, we can easily see that the Note 3 does a much better job at like a sunset type of photo compared to the 5S. Now, outdoors again. And kind of going to the same kind of shot. Um, again, the Note 3 just is a bit better with the mobile sign back there um, in comparison to the 5S. This is obviously a little bit more blurry. And um, just even in the signs right here, I know you can't see it during the camcorder, it seems like from my end, but I can kind of read the signs here, like I can read the no stopping tow away here whereas I can't read it at all on the 5S. Um, so overall, uh, just details are going to be better and uh, definitely like that sunset or sunrise uh, timing will look better on the Note 3. Again, in macro, in a uh, dimmer and lit setting, I was trying to focus on both the Starbucks and on the icon here. Again, what we found is uh, just more clarity and more detail you can kind of see there's a little bit of fuzziness around the dragon here, whereas there is none on the Note 3, especially around this area, just a little bit more fuzziness. And then on the cup itself, again, we go through the argument with color reproduction versus clarity, just a bit better clarity here. The iPhone 5 isn't doing bad at all, or 5S isn't doing bad at all, but uh, in terms of detail, it seems to be better there, color reproduction better here. Now, this was pretty interesting. So first I did a photo with flash in a completely dark room, so it had no, uh, no light whatsoever. So when we go towards this, we can definitely see that the iPhone 5S just does not uh, measure in terms of, again, detail. The text here is much sharper and much cleaner than it is here. Uh, it's just a bit fuzzy and a bit kind of blurred in. You can see the textured lines within the words here that you can't there. Not to mention that my skin tone isn't really that pink. It's uh, closer to this, but not completely true to this. The completely true to color that I've seen has been through another feature that we went over earlier, which is the low light with flash which gave me this. Uh, this is something that the S4 didn't even have the ability to do, and this came out not only the best clarity on text, but truer skin tone than any other smartphone has been able to do in a flash scenario. Now for the last photos, I kind of want to show you what the setting was. So these last photos were taken in a setting where I had very minimal light. Um, literally, this was the amount of light, B 
being let through. As we can see on my S4. So this was the amount of light being let through the entire room. This is on the opposite side of where I was. And on regular automatic, just in contrast, this is what I got with a regular automatic photo. So for the 5S, I did put it on the HDR mode, and this is the HDR mode on the Note 3. If we zoom them both in, again, I've said this time and time again, iPhone does a way better job with HDR than um, just really any Android I've seen do. Um, just a bit better with the HDR mode, a lot of noise uh, just built into the skin tone right there. However, the low light mode is going to be their saving grace. So whereas if you zoom into both of them, this is definitely again clear on the text. Not only that, but you do have just a little bit less noise in comparison and uh, again, truer skin tone in comparison to that. So uh, low light mode beats HDR mode typically and in terms of skin tone, it's definitely more accurate, which you know, I was trying to see if their flash, uh, what I forgot what the marketing term they use, but if it was just a marketing gimmick or if it was true, and as it seems by this comparison, it's not really that true. So overall for camera quality, which one is really the top one? Well, they both have their pros. Overall though, I would say that it's going to go to the Note for its just quality and overall camera quality. It's just going to be a bit better uh, from what we've seen. So the top camera would go to the Note and their video quality, there's just no comparison. The Note definitely takes it in video. So which camera should you get? Well, let you be the judge of that. It obviously matters on the phone you want as well and the size and the price. Uh, please take a look again at my full comparison to look at these issues and see which one is best suited for you. Thank you for watching. This has been RICKY, the Android Guy.